there are some points that I want to say that are directly relevant to the United Nations and to world culture. And, and maybe the most concrete way to say it is that this is probably the first time, in fact it is the first time in my entire life that I ever had sat on a panel outside of specialty conferences that are just about consciousness which are considered very marginal and, and do not have mainstream acceptance. This is the first elite location probably that has ever occurred where people like this can sit in front of an audience like this and say what we've said about how the fact that materialism is not true and the mind as a non-material force through focused attention can change the brain. It is radically new that we can sit here and tell you this. It has never happened before. And, and, and I want to stress another point. Um, it's really, I can't, you know, seeing Leo DiCaprio, who I worked extremely closely with, I mean, again, if I had the time, even just that one scene that they showed of, he, he was portraying Howard Hughes, a man whose life was ruined by obsessive compulsive disorder, and, and we spent hours and hours and hours just on that one little segment that you just watched, working together to get all the nuances right, and I wish I had the time to tell you more about that, and and, and then how Martin Scorsese synergized the process. And it was, it was a very, very interesting thing. And again, it, I'm just so happy that, that you could see that little piece of that. And, 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 and maybe one, I'll tell one fast anecdote about Leo DiCaprio that'll kind of lead into where I'm going here, which and really does make the point. Leo DiCaprio so immersed himself into that role and, 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 and on the other, there's another 15-minute uh, video after this one that you saw in which I talk about Mario's work in terms of how the mind can change serotonin and how actors, when they portray a role, actually change how their neurochemistry works. And he did this spectacular work in his laboratory showing that when actors portray a role, they change how the serotonin in their brain works. And, and to bring that point home to real life, Leo DiCaprio so immersed himself in this role to portray it and worked so closely and, and was so dedicated. I mean, I, you, know, you know, the nuances that he wanted to integrate into the performance and that I very much believe he did um, integrate into the performance resulted in the fact that for three months after the filming was stopped, he could not stop having obsessive compulsive disorder. So he actually induced in his own brain a, a transient case of obsessive compulsive disorder which took several months for him to sort of recover from. And if that doesn't tell you how powerfully the mind can affect the brain and how much an actor can immerse themselves in a role that it takes three months after the shooting is done to get out of the role and stop having obsessive compulsive thoughts, feelings, and symptoms, that, is, that is, I think it, itself is just a very, very powerful way of understanding how much focused attention can change the brain. And, and, and I want to say one other thing, just to contextualize this for you. You know, we've had some sort of very polite and, you know, lady and gentlemanly uh, comment about the struggles we've all been through. We've been through intense struggles. Every one, every one of us has paid serious career prices for the choices that we've made um, to, to say that the materialist paradigm needs to change. And, and Henry just so eloquently, and, and I'm, I'm aware of years of refinement that it's taken for him to take this very, very complex mathematics that he understands like very, very few people who have ever lived, and, and, and be able to talk to uh, a lay audience and describe it in such clear terms has taken a huge amount of additional labor for him that he had focused his own attention on. But I need to tell you, because he never would because he's too humble, that as cogent as what he was just saying to you is, and, and, and as necessary it is for us as a world community to translate our paradigm of understanding the relationship between consciousness and the body, consciousness and the brain, in ways that Henry just described so that we can understand how focused attention changes our brain. Henry's view of quantum physics, which is the orthodox view, which is the view of the founders of the field of quantum mechanics, and let me stress this third point because it's the most important one, is the only way that quantum mechanics can actually be done. It's the only way that you can actually collect data 
in physical experiments that's ever been known and ever been actually practiced. And yet for all of that, very, very few physicists would sign off on what Henry just said. It's considered extremely controversial. And why? Because everybody in the scientific establishment is so dedicated, and in fact, they're following Albert Einstein in this because Albert Einstein radically disagreed with what he just said, and, and Albert Einstein went to his grave not believing that the Heisenberg uncertainty principle was an actual principle of nature. He thought it was just a stopgap measure. And, and, and so we are still, as a community of a small minority of scientists who want to overcome this materialist paradigm, struggling with our lives, our careers suffer, our incomes radically suffer. We, we, we don't get anything like the kind of recognition from the mainstream media that the materialist community gets. So, I mean, it is an incredible honor to be here. It's also an incredible opportunity to be here. But I have to tell you that we are, you know, a small drop in the bucket still as we speak today. There is huge resistance among the mainstream scientific elite against granting the fact that materialism is not the ultimate truth. And let me say one thing, and, and then I'll bring this to a conclusion, about why that's true. Because if, if, if what, we're, what we're telling you up here... Um, turns out to be the case, and I think that already there's such a large amount of data that it, you know, I think it straightforwardly is the case. And as I'm saying, as we sit here right now, it's still the only way the quantum mechanics can be done, and yet they still will do anything to deny that that's the case. And why? Yes, there are economic reasons. Um, you know, I, I, I have what I would call a balanced and pretty neutral view of the pharmaceutical industry. I am not anti-pharmaceutical industry and I am not anti-drug, although my opponents try to describe me as that. It's not the case. But just the fact that I want to use pharmaceutical agents, that I want to use psychiatric medicines as a way to enable people's capacity to focus their attention more effectively so that they are enabled to change their brain, that view of using pharmaceutical agents, which I think most people would just say is common sense, of course that's what we should be doing, is considered radical, considered anti-establishment, and, and, and the, the, the notion of psychiatric drugs and now they want to put electrodes and are putting electrodes in people's brains even though the neuroanatomy is not understood at any level that would justify putting electrodes in people's brains to treat psychiatric disorders and yet it's being done and it's being aggressively pushed by by industry by basically a collaboration of industry and elite science who want to, on the one hand push the materialist paradigm and on the other hand want to obviously make significant profits from the from the sale of of, of these uh, medical devices. And the point I'm making is this. Yes, on one hand we're up against economic forces. On one hand, the, the materialist paradigm is, is viewed as in, in some way a, a, a key to, to how um, free enterprise economics operates. And it's certainly viewed as the key to how science operates. I actually think, and I, and I am a strong believer in free enterprise economics. I mean, Adam Smith's book, The Theory of Moral Sentiments, was a, was a prime inspiration for me in, in um, developing my, my method for treating obsessive compulsive disorder. The notion of the impartial spectator, which, is, which I'm sure many of you are very, very well familiar, is the core mental um, description that Adam Smith uses in the theory of moral sentiments to understand how we understand moral truth and how we can apply that understanding of moral truth to, to modify our behaviors. Reading that book, The Theory of Moral Sentiments, was absolutely a primary inspiration for me for developing this, this uh, method of how to treat obsessive compulsive disorder. But So I am in no way an opponent of free enterprise economics. I am a strong advocate for free enterprise economics, but I deeply believe believe that materialist science is now obstructing a, a proper approach to free enterprise economics. The last thing that I want to say is um, you cannot overestimate how threatened the scientific establishment is by the fact that it now looks like the materialist paradigm is genuinely breaking down. You're going to hear a lot in the next calendar year about Darwin and about how Darwin's explanation of how human intelligence arose is the only scientific way of doing it. 
if you take if you take what Henry said as, as, as a physical mechanism, you can understand evolution and even Darwinian evolution. Darwinian evolution. There's a big difference between Darwin's view and the neo-Darwinian view. You can understand that in non-materialist ways. And so my final statement is this. If the scientific culture is going to become a pro human life, I won't say pro-life because I don't want to throw around politically charged terms, but a pro-humanity culture, it is going to have to deal with the fact that the materialist paradigm has broken down. And there are huge social resistances against recognizing that fact. And I'm asking us as a world community to go out there and tell the scientific establishment enough is enough. Materialism needs to start fading away. Non-materialist causation needs to be understood as part of natural reality. Well, thank you. <laughs>